Okay. So today's Monday. It's second period. We're going to do the odds. If you want to see the evens, then go find the other video. Okay. So number one. If this is true, then in terms of x and y, find dy dx. Okay. One of the bigger mistakes, and it's one of the mistakes that is sort of they test against on the AP test, and it's tested in the uh, AP classroom because I, I checked, um, I was looking around to see like what detail I can see on your work, and the explanation was there that what some people will do is they'll immediately say dy dx equals and then start taking a derivative. Do it, you can't do that here. Your, your job here is to take the derivative of both sides and dy dx will show up. So and we can still pick on people even though I'm recording. So let's see. On the left-hand side, looks like there's two terms there. So Holly, on the left-hand side, What's the derivative of 7? Zero. <laughs> Monday morning, still waking up. Luke, how about the derivative of 3x cubed? 9x squared. 9x squared. And then the right-hand side is a little harder to just ask for that derivative because there's a lot going on. Um, Lexi, what's going on here? What will it take to find this derivative? Product rule. So product rule, especially with the 2 there, Remember, it's, it's probably wise to think of the 2 as with the x and then the y squared by itself. So first is 2x. Derivative of y squared. McKenna, what's the derivative of y squared? 2y. Good. 2y. You could say dy dx. McKenna said y prime, so we'll go with y prime. Plus the other way around, so let's see, I did the 2x, so now I need y squared. Jameson times the derivative of 2x, which is 2. Okay, so I'm done with calculus. Now it's an algebra problem uh, in an attempt to get y prime by itself. So let's see, 9x squared minus 2y squared. Feeling ambitious? Can we jump to the end here? Mm -hmm. Move the y squared over and then divide by 4xy. <coughs> 9x squared minus 2y squared over 4xy. Uh, you can kind of see where some of the mistakes happen. If you forget to take the derivative of 7 and just leave it there, that'd be answer D. Know where the other answers come from. Number three. If x squared y minus 3y squared equals 5, find the slope of the tangent line at the point. So that means we want dy dx at 2, 1. Right, that's the fancy way to say at or evaluate at. So it's pretty similar to the last one, except. I won't stop once I have it in terms of x and y. I'll plug in 2 and 1. Got another uh, chain or another product rule here. So x squared y prime, first derivative times derivative of the second, plus second times derivative of the first. So y times 2x minus. I need the derivative. Take of 3y squared. Um, 3y squared, uh, 6y, 6y times y prime. Good. 6y times y prime, the chain rule part. And then on the other side, the derivative of 5 is 0. Okay. Calculus is done. Now it's algebra time. So going to move the 2xy to the other side. Oh, wait. Do you want to move things around first or do you want to plug in first? I mean, it doesn't matter. Plug in first. I feel like when you have a point, sometimes it's easier to plug in first. 
um, because it sometimes makes makes things go away. So let's let's plug in first. So x squared would be 4y prime plus y times 2 times x, so 1 times 2 times 2, minus 6 times 1 times y prime equals 0. So 4y prime minus 6y prime is negative 2y prime. And 2 times 2 is 4. But when I move it over, it becomes negative 4. And then if I divide by negative 2, y prime is 2. Uh, at that particular point, at 2, 1. All right, you guys have noticed these questions are usually like one-step calculus and then five steps algebra. Number five. Oh, it's a FRQ. Consider the curve given by. Show that. We like these answers or these problems because, like, there's the answer. Like, we should get to that as an answer. Um, it, that's nice. Like, how can I miss this problem? Except I've got to show my work to get there. So let's see. The derivative of y cubed. Justin, how about the derivative of y cubed? Maybe 3y. Uh, squared y prime. Good. 3y squared y prime. And then I've got product rule again. Although be careful, that minus sign uh, it needs to go to both pieces. So first times derivative of the second plus, although I'm distributing the minus sign, second times derivative of the first. Derivative of 2 is 0. Trying to solve for y prime. So it's minus, and then the derivative of xy is, you good? Yeah. xy prime plus y, and then I'll distribute the minus sign. Wait. The derivative of x is 1. Sorry. So y prime, 3y squared minus x equals, and then move the y over. And it, I mean, it's nice when you've got the answer there, right? Like you know where you're headed. So y prime equals y over 3y squared minus x. That's one where if you can't get there, you're going to like put a bunch of crud in there and hope that it's close enough and hope that I'm not reading your answers close enough and you'll box this and be like, see, I got it and see if it works, right? Like maybe it works well enough that you get some points out of the deal. Here's why on these type of problems we, we start that way because if you miss that, you're going to miss the rest of the problem. But if we give it to you, it's like, well, now you can, even if you can't figure that out, you can hopefully work the rest of the problem. Write an equation for the line tangent to the curve. Okay, so that means I need a point and a slope. They give me the point. The slope would be the derivative, and they gave they even gave me the derivative. So I'm going to find the derivative at the point we're talking about. And then I can put my pieces together and write the equation of a line. What happens if we don't write that? If I make it not make it look all fancy like this, yeah. um, I think you'd be okay, um, especially since there's not, you know, like multiple things going on. If it asks you for the derivative at two different points, then you would definitely need to do something to show me which one was which. Mm -hmm. You could just say at negative one one slope equals or something. Okay, so back to the original. What they gave me is y prime one over. 3 times 1 squared minus negative 1. Uh, I mean, that's that's a safe stop. Like you, so you could carry this through the rest of the problem. The trouble is you've got to write that a few more times. So probably worth it to take the extra 2 seconds to see that 3 plus 1 is 4. And so the slope is 1 fourth. So 
y minus y1 equals one fourth x plus one. Remember from last week, what does a slope of zero look like? If I'd have gotten zero right here, show me with your arm, what does a zero slope look like? Uh oh, I saw a couple, uh oh. Zero slope is this. <laughs> there we go. So we've got a few adjustments going on. What does an equation of a zero slope line look like? Y equals <coughs> whatever number you want it to be at. Y equals two or five or eight or negative one. What's an undefined slope look like? How would that happen? How would you end up with undefined for an answer to a slope question? Like what would, what would this, what would have happened here to make it undefined? That the vertical tangent line, but how would I know that from right here? Zero where? The zero in the bottom. It would be a vertical tangent line, it would look like this, and its equation would be what would the equation of a vertical line be? X equals negative 10 or negative 5 or 0 or 2 or 8 or whatever. Okay, so we like it when they're kind of normal, but don't forget about those special cases, the Y equals line and the X equals line. Part C, find the coordinates of all points on the curve. Oh, here we go. We were just talking about this. At which the line tangent to the curve is vertical. Vertical. So just trying to think through vertical is that. So what does that mean in terms of like calculus or algebra things? We're just saying this. What what's that? What's undefined? Slope is undefined. Kind of going through the thought process here, even though you might not write all this down. Slope is undefined. What would make the slope undefined? Zero in the bottom. Okay. Find the coordinates of all the points on the curve at which the line tangent to the curve is vertical. So I need the, the basically I need the bottom of the derivative to be zero. So I need this. 3y squared minus x is 0. Oh, I don't like that because that's got x's and y's in it. And it wanted me to find the coordinates of the points. That suggests I should have answers that look like coordinates, right? <coughs> 2, 7, and negative 1, 5, or whatever they are. So 3y squared minus x equals 0. What, what else can I use? else do I know? I also know that y cubed minus xy equals 2. That was my original equation. Oh, so now I've got an algebra problem. I've got a system of equations and not a particularly nice one. Although not bad because I can move the x over. x is 3y squared. place of x, I could put 3y squared. So y cubed minus 3y squared times y equals 2. Well, they were, they were kind of, I mean, the algebra was yuck, but now they're, this is not bad. 1y cubed minus 3y cubed is negative 2y cubed. Yes? Well, that makes y cubed. So y cubed is negative 1, which means y is negative 1. Why is that not my answer? I've got to find the x because we want the coordinates. So I need to plug it back into one of these. Um, but x equals 3y squared seems the easiest bet to do this here. So x would be 3. So at 
3, negative 1, that's a point on the graph that has a vertical tangent line. And I suppose if I had extra time, all the time in the world, I'd go back and, and plug 3, negative 1 into the original and make sure that it is on the graph. And then I could plug it into the slope and make sure that it does put a 0 in the bottom. But you're not going to have all kinds of extra time on the AP test, so we're going to trust it and move on. Part D. Evaluate the second derivative when x is negative 1 and y is 1. Second derivative. Well, I got the first derivative. Again, and I, I know I got that right because they gave that to me. What's it going to take for this one? Quotient rule. And kind of ugly, so it might be worth it to slow things down and write them out. And then you can pick on people. All right, Seth, how about the derivative of, of f if f is equal to y? y prime. Um, Dylan, how about we'll split this one into, into two pieces here. What's the derivative of 3y squared? Good. 6y times y prime. And James, the derivative of x? 1. Okay, so my second derivative then is the gf comes first. So gf prime is y prime, 3y squared minus x minus the other way around, although that, nope, that's a minus one, so y times 6y, y prime minus 1, all over 3y squared minus x squared. Terrible. But it's a free response question, so there's a safe stop coming soon. Um, we know x and y. They gave us that. How about y prime? What am I going to do about that? There's two options here. One of them is a, a longer way around, and one of them is a, a smarter way around. Do we know what y prime is? What is, what is y prime equal to? One fourth, because this is the same point they used earlier. C part B, y prime is one fourth. Now, if you didn't catch that, then you, you plug it in and eventually get one fourth and then maybe realize, whoops, I could have saved myself some time here. So y prime is one fourth. I know x and y, so I'm just going to plug it in and be done. I'm not messing with this. 3 times 1 squared minus negative 1. Like, I'm not simplifying anything. College board, you give me an ugly question, I give you an ugly answer. It's your, your one small way to stick it back to college board, right? 6 times 1 times 1 fourth minus 1 all over. 3 times 1 squared minus negative 1 squared. Done. Yeah. You just, mentally in your head, you're thinking, dear reader, if you want this, then you figure it out. Um, yeah, I would say pretty doubtful for one like that to be multiple choice. And it, I mean, yeah, you can be snarky like, like I am, but like they want you to leave it like this. They don't want you to keep going and waste five minutes of your time and potentially make a dumb mistake. Like you've done the calculus. This problem is to test if you can do the quotient rule. And once you've done the quotient rule and plugged in, like you're done. Leave it alone. Number seven. Uh-oh, looks like related rates because we got a snowball melting, so we got R's and B's probably. Spherical snowball is melting in such a way that it maintains its shape. So, okay, so it's always a sphere. 
the snowball is decreasing in volume. Decreasing, that seems like it might be an important word. At a constant rate of six cubic centimeters per hour. So, uh, Jace, what do I do with that statement? Like, how do I turn that into a, a math statement rather than an English statement? Um, well, you have the formula that then you just try and solve for. I don't even want you to look at the formula yet. I want you to take this statement and change it into a math equation. Like, what's it telling me? Uh, it's just telling you that the volume is going down. Okay. Down. Six centimeter cubed per hour. But what is negative six cm cubed per hour? Um, the rate of volume. Okay, so what will I... You're right. How do I write that in a mathy way? The uh, rate of volume. Uh, D V D T. Yes. D V D T. Um, rate means that there's going to be a D T in the bottom because it's a time thing. And volume would mean the volume is changing. That would be the D V in the top. So D V D T is negative six centimeter cube per hour. At what rate? So we're going to find something dt, probably the radius. Is the radius changing? So find dr dt when r equals 8. So it would be nice to have an equation with dv dt and dr dt in it. And they were kind enough, kind enough to give us an equation that we just need to take a derivative of. Um, Ashlyn, how about the derivative of the left-hand side? Um, don't overthink this. The derivative of dv dt. Austin, you get the harder side, although I don't think it's too bad. Is it 4 pi r squared? DRDT. Good. 4 pi r squared dr dt. That was a lot of pieces there, but yes. And now I think we're good because we know dv dt. That's negative 6. 4 times pi times r is 8, so 64. And the r dt is what we're looking for. Um, the RDT is going to be negative, but none of my answer choices are negative. Are you okay with that? Did we do something wrong? Yeah, because it said at what rate is the snowball decreasing. So that sort of implies the negative there. Okay, so negative 6 over 4 pi 64. That would be our, that would be our safe stop answer. See, I can reduce by. Oh, I'm looking at my answer choices. I guess I could reduce by two. So three over two times sixty-four is one twenty-eight, and there's a pi in the bottom. So answer D. So a little bit of interpretation, maybe a lot of interpretation. One calculus step, and then some algebra stuff. Yeah. It's not going to do that. Yeah, because that's that's too tricky. Because yeah, which which one is yeah? Free response would be a little easier because if you said drdt is negative, that's true. That's a true statement. Just be careful if you wrote out the radius is decreasing at negative. That wouldn't be right. Right, because you got two negative words in there. So it's changing at a negative or it's decreasing at a positive. Yeah, good question. Calculus is tricky enough. We're not going to go that level of tricky on you. Number nine. Oh, the old cone where the R and the H. Hey, before I even read this question, we've done enough of these. What would you tell me about R and H? R is... Wait, did you say that right? Yeah, H is... H is 3 times R, which means R is H over 3. And until I read the question, I don't know which one's better. 
But now let's read the question. A container has the shape of an open right circular cone as shown in the figure on the right. Everything okay? My phone didn't go off. Cone has a radius of 4 at the top. Height is 12. Water flows into the container at a constant rate of 6 cubic feet per minute. How fast is the water level rising when the height is 5 feet? So let's call that H and this R. Water flows into a container at a constant rate. What's that mean in math? In English, water flows into the container at a constant rate of 6 cubic feet per minute. Aslan, translate that into math for me. Uh, it is a slope. There we go. That's what I wanted you to say. dv dt is 6 feet cubed per minute. Then how fast is the water level rising? So, Johnny, what am I looking for? What am I trying to find? Um, DHDT. Good. Find the HDT when H is 5. Okay. So, would I like to plug 3R in for H in this equation? Why not? Some of you are shaking your head no. Right, I want H in my equation. I want R to go away. Um, like, I mean, it wouldn't be wrong to plug 3R in for H. It just wouldn't be helpful because then I've got R stuff instead of H stuff. So let's change this to H over 3. R is equal to H over 3. And now plug that in for R. And now my R stuff is gone. Which is good, because I don't have any R stuff in the equation. It didn't tell me anything about R, or ask for anything about R. So I want R out of there, and I want everything in terms of H. Okay. 3 squared is 9, times 3 is 27. So pi over 27, H cubed. And I would like dH dt to show up, so I need to take the derivative of both sides. Addy and Abby, softball and tennis. Addy, take the left-hand side. Um, DVDT. Yeah, you get the easy one. DVDT uh, is 6, but for now, let's just say DVDT. But you're right, you could plug in 6 there. Abby, how about the right-hand side? Um, five, Good. Power over 27 just stays out front. Derivative of h cubed is 3h squared dh dt. And then dv dt is 6. The 3 and the 27 can reduce. <coughs> h is 5. 5 squared is 25. Times dh dt. dh dt is what, what we're looking for. Sort of get lost in the problem and forget what they're solving for, and they end up with some answer that might be right, but is not the answer to the question asked. Um, oh, it's pre response, so I can carefully move this stuff over and, and leave it alone, right? So 9 times 6 over 25 pi. Just leave it like that. It did not ask for units. <clears throat> so I don't have to give units, but it easily could have asked for units. So then what would the units be if it had asked for units? H is feet. The time in this problem is minute, so feet per minute. And remember, you can get the unit point right even without getting the question right. So 
if it asks for units, make sure you look at DHDT speed per minute, and then even if you mess up something, you'll still get the unit point correct if it asks for it. Okay, did I lay out the the points and stuff on the last last class? I did that for somebody somewhere? It must have been. Did I do that for you guys, or was that only for fourth period? Uh, it's not a ton of questions. I think it was 14 multiple choice. There it is. Yes, it is on the board. 14 multiple choice, one free response. On the AP test, they give you two minutes per multiple choice question. So just like I'm checking to make sure the timing is right. You get 15 minutes for a free response question. So 28 and 15, that adds up to 43. And class time is 50 minutes. Obviously, it takes a couple minutes to get things passed out, get going, whatever. And I'll give you the full time. So yes, it seems like it's a quick test because it's on not a block day. But we should be OK time-wise and have a few extra minutes to spare. Also, like. Two minutes per problem, and that's for the main AP test when you're like jumping all over the place in terms of like topics. Here, it's fairly focused, so I'm, I'm hoping it's faster than two minutes because your brain is all um, related rates and implicit, not anything other crazy. Ben? I think I'm going to go no I heart calc on this. <coughs> the trade off is I'm going to make the multiple choice worth. Let me finish this sentence before you complain. I'm going to make the multiple choice worth five. The free response, um, what did I say? So 14 times five is 70. Probably make the free response, um, like there's four parts. So four each is 16. That makes 86. But I'm going to really do some partial credit on multiple choice. And they'll probably be worth three each, as long as you like, show me your work, because most of the mistakes are going to be the algebra mistakes. Right? So if I see that you set it up right, and then you botch something after that, I'll take off three rather than five. So only 86 points to begin with. You're not going to lose five for every multiple choice question. You're going to get five, hopefully, from the AP, the my, the my Classroom thing. So I think you'll be OK, what I'm trying to say. All right, if you want to see the evens, then watch the other video.